Jill and Paul are my co-chairs of NAL. And what we're going to be doing is explaining what NAL is, what it does, um, and how we're going to see how good it is in the future. So how did NAL come about? Well, first of all, NAL stands for Learning, Observing and Understanding Disability. Um, and we came up with that title just over a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, when we launched now in the university. Um, and I think it's a picture. Um, probably not very distinct, actually, in terms of the size and the light in the room. But this is a meeting we had, is it last week? Last week, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the last meeting of Loud, and you can see us all sitting around the table, uh, surrounded by a lot of easy leaked information and just discussing things. Um, <coughs> so, a bit about the background of Loud. Loud came about, as I said, just over a year ago because we have in the university something that calls itself the Learning Disability Education Group. And this is a collaborative group which comprises academics in, in learning disability, um, both from nursing and from speech and language therapy. Um, it comprises service providers um, and also uh, learning disability nurses, Kent are represented as well. In fact, Kent is sitting right there now. <laughs> um, and what, it also has a few student representatives on it. And what this group aims to do in the is to make our teaching about learning disability better than it is already. The group is tasked with monitoring and developing the quality of education uh, in learning disability at Christchurch University. And it's achieved quite a few things over the many years that it's been in existence and we're generally very pleased with it. But one thing that bothered this group almost from the start was the fact that it didn't include anybody with a learning disability on the group. Uh, it was exclusive. And um, we talked several times, we returned to the subject quite a few times about how best to involve somebody with learning disabilities, somebody who regularly teaches in the university, as both Paul and Jill do, um, in that group. And in the event we decided, because the brief of that group was so wide ranging, the discussions were often quite complicated and quite academic at times, that meaningful, meaningful involvement of somebody with a learning disability could be quite challenging and in fact if we achieved any kind of participation at all it was likely to be rather tokenistic. Uh, so we decided instead, taking our cue from um, at least one other university at the morning, uh, of setting up a parallel group to run parallel to the Learning Disability Education Group to task with exactly the same mission to develop um, education in learning disability but this group will comprise almost solely our co-teachers with learning disabilities. Um, it's still got some academic input. I'm co-chair, um, Andy Nazaruk, who some people may know, um, who's here today and giving his own presentation. Um, it's also involved in the group, um, as is uh, Fiona, I don't think he's in here, uh, who's a senior lecturer in speech and language therapy, a particular interest in learning disability as well. That's how we came up with learning. Um, and we had a bit of a party to launch it, didn't we? We yeah. had a, a lunch at a special event in the university. It was very well attended, very exciting. And that was just over a year ago. So, just very quickly, we can just run through these. Um, these are the members of Loud. At the moment, we involve lots of different groups of people with learning disabilities in teaching in the university. Uh, from all these organisations, plus a few others. One of the um, rather uh, positive challenges that Loud has presented us with is its popularity. Um, <laughs> a lot of people want to be in Loud and we're having to sort of, um, sort of manage um, access to Loud a little bit because otherwise the meetings are going to become unmanageable. It's so popular. So at the moment both Paul and Jill come from the School of the Opportunity Service, um, but we've also got a uh, regular representation from East Kent Mencat, some of them are here today, Cartrek Homes, Stroke Park Lifestyles Academy, um, and then two local DPGs. And the important thing about membership of Loud is that all those people who are in Loud teach regularly in the university. 
university. Um, and you two you've taught um, student nurses, haven't you? Yeah. Adult nurses and yeah. simulated hospital admissions. Um, I think you've taught mental health students yeah. in the past as well. Um, and maybe in the distant past social workers, I'm, I'm not sure. Most of it is teaching student adult nurses. So, how do we communicate in loud? Um, well, obviously it's based on um, principles of accessibility, so the reference to the accessible communication standard. So, we make use of photo symbols, for example. I'm sure people are very familiar with photo symbols. Also, of course, the change picture bank. Uh, that's the uh, uh, image for ideas, I think. Uh, and we also make other sort of reasonable adjustments as you would expect to communicate within the group. So we're very conscious about how we set up the room, perhaps more so than we would be have a meeting, so that it uh, maximises uh, inclusivity. Um, and um, we adapt the way the language that we use, the words that we use, um, in the effort to give everybody a voice as well. So, this is um, just an excerpt from a, a recent agenda um, and every meeting we talk about uh, why we're there, don't we, what the whole point of yeah, loud yeah. is. Uh, just to remind people, because sometimes with loud we find it's very popular, but um, attendance does fluctuate. So you get some people who haven't been for uh, a couple of months, uh, you two are very, very regular, I think you've always been there. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember you down, we missed a single meeting yet. Um, but other people do, and people come and go, so we always go back to why we're there and what we're doing. We then always talk, as you would in any committee, about the last meeting and decisions that we made and what actions transpired. Um, we send out notes at the end of a meeting, which, and this is again, it's an excerpt from the notes, from the, from the notes of our meeting last week. Um, uh, one of the things that both I and my colleague Andy talked about uh, was on request from one of the members of Dow, who's not here today, um, he wanted to know in advance which classrooms he was going to be teaching in before he arrived. So we took note of this um, and Andy and I said that in future we would email people the room that we're going to be teaching in along with a photograph of it so people would know what to expect when they got into the university. Um, and we are also um, identified that we need to um, uh, give Loud a higher profile locally, if you like, and help it to link to other groups in Kent, um, such as the Good Health Group as well. So it's worth saying something about what we do in Loud. Um, perhaps how we start every meeting. We start with teas and coffees, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. Um, a bit of a natter, yeah. um, totally informal. <laughs> Because often people are there from very different organisations and apart from through loud, you don't know each other at all, do you? Um, so it's important to do a bit of ice breaking. We do that quite informally. There was one meeting, do you remember, when you two had been out the night before? No. You've been clubbing, haven't you? Dylan Paul still had the stamp on their hand. Oh, wow. And there was a sudden bonding moment the guys there from Strode Park, which is um, a local uh, charitable foundation for young people with low disabilities, has been to the same club and everybody had the same stamp on their hands and the ice was broken very much. Oh, I thought you were going to make them You can say the other thing if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we just say you two were very lively that day? Yeah. yeah. So people are asked to choose a card from a pile on the table with some image on it that speaks to them in some way. So there might be pretty images, or I don't know, uh, golden beaches um, in the sun, or like pictures of animals like monkeys or birds or something. Can you remember the picture you had last week, Jill? Oh, well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you chose a man, didn't you? Because it seems yeah. sort of seasonal. Um, I might choose a picture of a 
a beach because I've been on holiday recently. So it gives everybody a chance to say why they chose that picture and say something about themselves as well. Um, and then items that might be on the agenda, we always talk about teaching we've done, don't we? Start off by talking about the teaching that we've done since the last meeting of an hour. Um, is it worth saying anything about that? The sort of teaching that you've done in the university? Any chaps? With the nurses. With the nurses, that's right. Um, and do you want to say for all the sorts of things that we do with the student nurses? students in year one uh, have a teaching session on stigma and social exclusion uh, and we always involve some, um, some people with learning disabilities in that session. We divide up into small groups with the students, don't we? Um, and the small groups always include one visitor, one big teacher and then usually about five or six students um, and the group is tasked with producing a poster called This Is Us. So it's an excuse to have a conversation, isn't it, about things you like, things you don't like, things you have in common. Um, so. things, you, things that you share, things that you both like. Uh, so that's something you've done. Jill, do you want to say anything about the teaching we do with the student nurses? I want like 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 when we don't like we can off you. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. We, what we do, um, we lay, lay on the bed and, we, and they kind of go around. They take your blood pressure. I be in the bed like that mm -hmm. and they and, and they, they ask you lots of questions. Oh, they? we are. They yeah. are. They might do, yes, they might do. They take the pulse. I take the bone mm -hmm. and have, have your heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, before they do all that, they ask you lots of questions, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Um, this is a session that my colleague Andy is presenting on in a different group today. These are simulated hospital admissions uh, where we make use of um, the pretend ward that we have in the university, don't we? Put a sort of pretend hospital. Um, and our co teachers with learning disabilities act as new patients <coughs> admitted to the ward uh, by year two um, student adult nurses and the point of that is to obviously address the health inequalities um, that tend to result in social exclusion and stigmatisation um, and it's rather fun isn't it um, and one of the things that students do is to work through a healthcare passport uh, with their co-teacher um, it gives the students a chance to see and use a healthcare passport um, and it gives you the chance to ask lots and lots of questions about your health. It can be hard work, can't it? Um, yeah. uh, but uh, it's generally rather good fun and the students love it, they learn a lot. So we also talk about teaching we'd like to do um, and uh, for instance one of the things that came up recently was involvement in the speech and language therapy programme at Christchurch because uh, Fiona Fowler, who was in, in Loud, asked you, didn't she, if you'd like to help the <coughs> communication partners to the student um, speech and language therapy, uh, speech, speech and language therapist, didn't she? Yes. So that's going to be a, like a buddying system where you're joined up with a student for the duration of their programme and they talk to you about communication, what helps you, uh, what's difficult. And we also talk about words we use, uh, a bit more about that later probably, um, but uh, thanks to um, People in Loud have been uh, very assertive about the sort of language that they like the university to use in connection with their involvement, the sort of language that they don't like. But we'll come on to that later. Um, and then we always end up with lunch. Um, at the moment, um, paying people 
uh, directly is very complicated, uh, as I'm sure people here know, uh, not least because um, it's not by any means usual for people with learning disabilities to have access to the right to work documents they need uh, for an organisation to pay them directly. And so for that reason, uh, payment is still in kind, unfortunately. I wish we could move this on. I'm not sure how we're going to, but we thank people as, as nice as much as we can. <laughs> uh, and then it's a nice social occasion as well. It gets people talking. So there are some challenges in Loud. It's, it's been great fun the past year, but um, we're not doing a great <coughs> job yet. I think that, that day is probably quite a long way off. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is producing easy read minutes or notes uh, that are also meaningful. Uh, the problem, I'd love to hear if anybody's got any potential solutions to this. The problem we find is that in loud, sometimes we can have quite complicated discussions sometimes, can't we? And yeah. We need to record a lot of detail of those discussions, but doing so in an easy read format that is going to uh, engage every member of that group after the meeting is quite difficult and sometimes we find that, well I find my lousy memory, uh, that recalling exactly how we approached that topic last time is quite difficult because the minutes don't really help as much as they would if they were not easy. And then a similar problem, but sort of reversed, um, is uh, presenting uh, the minutes of the Learning Disability Education Group, the group to which Loud is parallel, to members of Loud in such a way that makes them meaningful. Um, and this is a bit of an ethical concern of mine because these two groups uh, should run, well they are running, in parallel, and they should be talking to each other and communicating to each other. Now it's no problem to take the minutes of, of notes from Loud the Learning Disability Education Group, but it is quite problematic presenting the notes of the Learning Disability Education Group to Loud in such a way that is engaging for its members. So what I invariably end up doing is editing um, as I go, and I'm a bit uncomfortable with that, but I don't know how else to approach it. Okay. Um, and something that's a bit less of an issue now, actually, and um, this is where the Evoke Picture Cards have been so helpful to this group. Um, but it's still a little bit difficult getting everybody involved, isn't it? Getting everybody talking to each other. Because in a typical meeting, as I said earlier on, there'll be people who are new to the meeting from one organisation. There'll be old hands like Paul and Jill. Uh, there'll be people who haven't come for six months. Um, and trying to get everybody engaging and talking to each other, as well as just to their supporters, can be a little bit difficult, can't it? But I, I think it's getting better. What do you two think? Yeah. People are talking to each other more now? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. So, what have we achieved? Well, first of all, and I think the most important thing to, uh, of all, it's fluffy, but it's important, is we're just developing relationships with our co-teachers in Loud. Um, in Christchurch, we are involving people with learning disabilities much, much more every year, really, in the teaching that we do, and it's very little teaching I do in learning community now that does not involve co-teachers. Um, so it's really picked up enormously. There are a lot of organisations involved with Christchurch and from whom our co-teachers come, as you saw earlier on. Um, and having the opportunity to talk to our co-teachers outside of the formal teaching session really helps to get to know people better. Um, and it uh, probably sounds a bit arrogant, but I'm I think I've got to know you two better over the past year. I don't know whether you've got to know me better, but you know you. You do. And of course that helps with the quality of teaching because it just makes relationships a bit more meaningful, it generates more trust, etc. Another thing we've achieved is uh, a change in the way that language is used locally in the university. Um, in Christchurch, probably like every university, there's a very strong trend towards using the dreaded words service user <laughs> in terms of uh, community partner involvement. Um, and I have to say, up until about a year ago, I was gaily tossing around the phrase service user here, there, and everywhere until we talked about it at a loud meeting. It was one of our first meetings. Um, and the subject had come about via 
an email that dropped into my inbox from some chat group in the I can't remember which one it was. Some other group somewhere was objecting to the term service user. So we took it aloud and I asked people what they thought. My goodness, <laughs> that about opened the door to a torrent. Um, everybody hated the word service user, didn't they? Yeah. Do you remember Susan, Susan from then was really, really loud about it. <laughs> um, and uh, there, was, there was unanimity on this point. Nobody wanted to be called a service user, but everybody was happy to be called a co teacher or an expert by experience, or just an expert for sure. So that's the language we use now. I took that back to the university service user and carer committee, um, passed it on, and now everybody in the university is trying not to use the term service user, but old habits die hard. <laughs> the committee is still called the service user committee. Um, something else that we've done, and I really want to develop further, is um, supporting members of LAO to engage in other university activities besides um, the learning disability teaching involved, which whilst we love people's involvement in that, we treasure it and we value it so highly, it could become another little sort of ghetto. And I think it's really important for our visitors to the university to become engaged in the university in completely <coughs> different roles as well. Um, it's important for the university, part of whose mission is to develop relationships with the community as well. So one thing that's happened very recently that we're really pleased about is that one of our members who's not here today, um, he's a gentleman with uh, learning disabilities who lives at Strode Park in Hearn. He has recently joined a totally different group in the university with which I have nothing to do, which is the accessibility group, which is helping to inform the university's well, sinister, sinisterly titled Master Plan. Um, and uh, this young man with learning disabilities is now on that committee in the university, attending it completely independently of me or Laura or anything else. It's really good to um, give people with learning disability a louder voice. Secondly, um, one of the regular items on our agenda in now is to get feedback on student placements, because you guys have students, don't you? You have mental health nurses students yes. in, in your day service. Um, and a lot of the people in Laos have contact usually with mental health nursing students because they get a long LD placement in Christchurch. So we always ask our members what do they think of the most recent students, you know, have they been adequately prepared, etc. Um, recently somebody from Stroke Park told us that he found that students talked too much to his carers and not enough to him. So Andy and I as lecturers in learning disability have taken that on board and we're amending the way we prepare students for their placement um, to lay more emphasis on communicating with the person. We swap ideas about services. Um, for example, I think it was the last meeting but one. You guys were there. I think it was the morning after the night before meeting. Do you remember that one? <laughs> you may not. Um, and, um, uh, Stroke Park were there, and the students from Stroke Park were saying, oh, we have, you know, uh, get what they call them, student committees. Uh, we meet with our staff very regularly to talk about the service we're getting. And you guys from Swellcliffe don't, well, did, oh, not at the time having that, I don't know if you do now, but you all thought, cool, that would be good, we'd like to have those sort of meetings. So you took that back, didn't you, to the day service? Yeah. Uh, I have mentioned the involvement uh, with the speech and language therapy program as well. So plans for the future. Um, well, we're going to, um, thanks to the funding that we got from um, HEECS, uh, thank you, Roma. <laughs> thank you. Um, we're planning to evaluate the impact of LOUD in a formal way, um, using focus groups of both its members and of its supporters. Um, I really want to work on involving people with learning disabilities, local people with learning disabilities, getting them involved in the general work of the university, not just the little ghetto of learning disability teaching, getting them involved, in, getting them involved more in what goes on in the wider university. Um, and also we want to expand and develop obviously our teaching within the university. I'm still doing a bit of teaching in learning disability that doesn't involve uh, co-teachers. Um, and what I'd really like to do in the next year or two is sort of mop that up so that every bit of teaching we do in learning disability involves co-teachers or experts by experience. And as you know, one of our aims too 
is to build productive relationships with other related groups in, in Kent, or Kent, sorry, in Sussex, I should say, um, including the Good Health Group in Kent, which is our, our local health group for people with disabilities. I think that's all. Do you, do you want to say anything more?